Hello, and welcome to Bay College's video lectures for Math 085. We're going to look at section 3.9, which introduces square roots. Now, before we discuss what a square root is, let's define what a square is. And that's something we should be familiar with uh, at this point. Here in this example, we have 2 squared. And to square something means to multiply it by itself. So 2 squared just means take the base of 2 and multiply it by itself, 2 times 2. Well, 2 times 2 is 4. And we also know that if we square a negative, we're going to get a positive value. Because to square a value negative, notice the whole thing is in parentheses. It's saying take that value of negative 2 and multiply it by itself. Well, itself is negative 2. A negative times a negative is positive. 2 times 2 is 4. So when we square something, whether it's a positive value or the negative value, we're squaring it, we're always going to get a positive value. Let's look at 4. If I have 4 squared, I'm taking 4 and I'm multiplying it by itself. Two factors of 4. 4 times 4 is 16. If I'm squaring the quantity of negative 4, this integer negative 4, it says take this value and multiply it by itself. Negative 4 times negative 4. Well, still, a negative times a negative is a positive. 4 times 4 is 16. So when we square something, we always get a positive. And that's a very important concept to understand when we take the square root. Because if we look at a number like 16, a square root is basically going to work a square backwards. They're uh, interchangeable. One works, undoes the other, so to say. So if I want to undo a square, I can use a square root. A square root asked, what number times itself is the value I'm taking the square root of? So let's look at an example. Let's say I have the square root of 16. This basically says, what number times itself is 16? Well, there's two possibilities. There's 4. And there's negative 4. So there's positive 4 or negative 4. Because what is 4 squared? 16. What is negative 4 squared? Still 16. So what we're going to look at in this section is only the positive values. We're not going to worry about those negative ones. And because this, whenever you square a value, it's always a positive value like we've seen here. You'll never be able to take the square root of a negative number at this level of math. This is not a real number. Okay, The square root of a negative is not a real number. That's what we would say. We would actually write out not real. So we're not going to worry about that. If we see that, all we're going to say is not real at this point in math. So a square root says what number times itself is the value under this radical, under the square root. So let's look at this one, because this is a special case here. We have the square root of 0. Well, <clears throat> it still asks the same thing. What number times itself is 0? What number would I have to square in order to get this 0? Well, if we think about 0, 0 times anything is 0, even if it's 0 times itself. 0 times 0 is 0. So the square root of 0 is 0, because 0 times itself is still 0. So notice this one wouldn't have a plus or minus possibility, because 0 is neither positive nor is it negative. So it's, the square root of 0 is 0. All right, one thing that will help you tremendously when it comes to square root is to be familiar with your perfect squares. Uh, 1 squared is 1, as we've seen here. 2 squared is 4. 4, 3 squared is 9. These numbers you should commit to memory so that when you see 81, you know, hey, I know that that's 9 times 9, a perfect square. Or if you see 121, you know that's 11 times 11. Or if you look at 49, you know that's 7 times 7. If you commit these to memories, it will make square roots a lot uh, less troublesome. All right, so let's move on to some examples. And hopefully, you'll recognize them. And maybe you'll, uh, we'll be able to imply some new strategies. So if we look at this, a square root simply asks, what number times itself would give me 49? So the square root of 49 is 7 times 7 would give me 49. So the number times itself is 7. 
and recognize that as a perfect square. 49 is 7 times 7. So what number times itself is 49? 7 times itself. What number times itself is 81? What is the square root of 81? Well, I recognize 81 to be a perfect square of 9. Now here, we have a fraction under that square root. Don't panic. It's OK. What we can do is we can take it one piece at a time. We can say, well, what's the square root of the top? What's the square root of the bottom? Separate it. If you want, you can think of it as the square root of the top over the square root of the bottom. This is actually a rule, and we call it the quotient rule of radicals. Don't worry about that term. You'll, you won't hear it again until you get way further in math. So if we think of it this way, now I can just take it one number at a time. What is the square root of 1? Well, 1 is a perfect square. 1 is actually a unique number that it's a perfect any power number. So 1 times 1 would give me 1. So the square root of 1 is 1. The square root of 25. I recognize 25 to be a perfect square. It's 5 times 5. So the square root of 25 is 5. This square root of 1 25th turns out to be 1 5th. And when it comes to radicals, you can always check your work by squaring this value. You should get this value back. If I square 9, I get 81. If I square 7, I get 49. If I square this, 1 5th times 1 5th, 1 times 1 is 1, 5 times 5 is 25. I get 1 25th, this value right here. Now, not every number is a perfect square, as we've seen in the list on the previous screen. Is 2 a perfect square? It is not. 1's a perfect square, 4 is a perfect square. The numbers in between there are not perfect squares. So how do we find this value? Well, for this level of math, this is where we are committed to using a calculator for this level of math. If you plug this into a calculator, it's going to give you a decimal number. And this is an, what we call an irrational number. It's a non-repeating, non-terminating decimal. That decimal would go on forever if we could allow it. When we throw this into a calculator, we get a decimal number. So I'm just going to round it to three decimal places if you were to plug that into a calculator. And I'm, oh, I'm going to change that to an approximation, 1.414. That is the square root of 2. And of course, it's just an approximation. I had to round it, because even our calculators only have so many decimals they can display. <clears throat> but one tool you can use to check to see if that calculator is being truthful, because sometimes we can make mistakes, what I like to call fat-fingered mistakes, because they got small buttons, and I'm always hitting the wrong button. And when I get an answer that doesn't make sense, that's usually the problem. I like to call that a fat-fingered mistake. We can always estimate these. Well, as I had mentioned, 1 is a perfect square and 4 is a perfect square. And this number is somewhere in between it. Well, the square root of 1 is 1, and the square root of 4 is 2. This value is somewhere between 1 and 2, just as this value is somewhere between the perfect squares of 1 and 4. So that's one way to estimate it. Is this between 1 and 2? It sure is, 1.414. And of course, this would continue. So we rounded it. What about this here, the square root of negative 9? Well, I recognize 9 as a perfect square. But the fact that it is negative means we cannot find a perfect square. And here's why. I, I know that a positive times a positive is a positive value. I also know that a negative times a negative is a positive value. Is there a number times itself that will ever be negative? No, because when I square something, it will always be positive. So this one here, I'm just going to write not real. Because at this point, we're not able to take the square root of a negative value. All right, let's move on to he these four here. These four are for you to try. It's one of each variety that we've had there. Go ahead and try these for yourself. And I'll give you a hint on this one. 14 is not a perfect square. Use a calculator, round it to three decimals. But go ahead and try these four on your own. Practice, and you'll get there. Thank you for watching.